before Marilyn Monroe, long before Harry Potter, and, well, after Sherlock Holmes, but before I discovered Sherlock Holmes, there was but one obsession of mine ever since I was this tall, which wasn't very long ago, and his name was Vincent Price. <laughs> Hey guys, how you doing? If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm Leah Mouse, and I'm delightfully eccentric. Before we move along on our journey into my memories and obsessive discussion, please do me a favor and hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And well, if you like this video so far and think that you may like it, maybe you could click the thumbs up for me. That would be most delightful. Now, Vincent Price. First of all, if you don't know who that is, what are you doing here? What are you doing with your life? I don't even know who you are. Just, no. No, but seriously, some of you probably are young and haven't been exposed to a lot of stuff, or you're old and haven't been exposed to a lot of stuff, in which case you're about to be exposed to some stuff. Vincent Price is, of course, one of the greatest horror legends the world has ever seen. An American actor from St. Louis, Missouri, born in 1911 and was in theater productions in the 1930s and in feature films from the 1940s on. If you don't recognize this iconic face, I suggest that you head to your local library and check out a lot of old movies, Pronto. And if some of you guys still don't know what I'm talking about, that's okay. If any of you guys have seen Edward Scissorhands, which I'm sure most of you have, he was the inventor in Edward Scissorhands, a film by Tim Burton. Now this video isn't supposed to be like a history lesson or a biography on Vincent Price. This is just me getting you guys all up to speed so that I can gush about my obsession with him. So when I was but a young tot of about six or seven years old, I distinctly remember my mother bringing home a VHS tape called House on Haunted Hill. I didn't know anything about this. I mean, I was a child. And believe me, horror movies back then from like the ye old days, so much more tame than the horror movies now. One of my most fond memories was watching House on Haunted Hill with my mom as a youngster. And I remember one of my teachers in elementary school had like a, a movie day, like every month or something. And she would ask the students to bring in movies, you know, and she would screen them and make sure they were suitable for the class to watch. And then we would watch them. So I of course brought in House on Haunted Hill because I was the class weirdo. <laughs> My teacher definitely declined the showing of that movie and um, said that it would probably be too disturbing for most of the other students. And I couldn't understand why because I was like, this is an awesome movie, what are you talking about? I grew up watching that movie a lot and then when I grew up into my teen years, early teens, like 13, 14, the junior high school that I attended was like up at the top of this hill and because I was bullied on the school bus, my mom and I had this arrangement that she would pick me up rather than me riding the school bus. However, she was a teacher in a completely different town so she, you know, got out about the same time I did, but by the time she, like, drove to this town, you know, I would have been sitting at the school for, like, an hour, an hour and a half or something. So at first, I started walking from the school down to this little restaurant that was at the bottom of the hill of town, and on my way there, I would walk past a video rental store called Video Connection, and it was a family-owned place. It's really cool. I think the movies were, like, 75 cents to rent or something like that. It was, like, so cheap. I would always go to the back room. Like, the, that's not how it sounds. It was the horror horror movie room. It was just this little back room and I remember loving it so much. There was like the main room that you walked into that was really long and it had the front door and the back door. And you walk in and then if you went this way, it, there was this little narrow hallway and then this other room here. And it was like in the back. And it was like one of those like wooden floors underneath the carpet. So it was like really creaky and squeaky when you walked on it. Like I, it was just like, I don't know. I remember associating that with the horror movie room because it was like, the floor was creaky and it was creepy and cool and I liked it and it's the things you remember, right? So I go back to the horror movie room immediately and I would have my pick of the horror movies. Now technically these people weren't allowed to rent rated R, you know, restricted movies to people of my age, but I came in there all the time. I would always save an extra 75 cents left over from my lunch money so that I could rent a movie. I'd save $1.50 if I was really ambitious and wanted to rent two movies. <laughs> so what I would do is I'd go back there, I'd pick a movie, I'd watch the movie that night when I got home, 
The next day I'd return it, get another movie, and repeat the same process. So I exposed myself to a lot more Vincent Price movies this way. I saw Mask of the Red Death, Pit and the Pendulum, House of Wax. Those were my favorites. All, all the ones I just listed were my favorites, the top tier. Of course, aside from House on Haunted Hill, that will remain the top of my list just because I like grew up with that one and I've seen it so many times. So suffice to say, I absolutely loved Vincent Price. Then later on the town did this thing where they made a road that was across from the junior high to the like back entrance of the library, which was new. They built this new library and they made a new road so that you could access it. It's hard to explain if you don't know the town, but just take my word for it. I decided instead of walking down there, I was gonna go across to the library instead. So at the tail end of eighth grade in 1999, I was 14 years old. I get to the library and on the new releases shelf. There sits the face of my childhood horror movie icon. So here's this book sitting there with the face of the man that I was just like admiring so much because I was obsessed with horror cinema back then, especially old horror cinema. So I checked the book out and I was 14 years old, right? And when you're 14 years old, reading a biography, if you would have told me at 14 years old, sit down and read this biography, I would have been like, that is the most boring thing you could have asked me to do. However, Vincent Price was my main man. So I definitely checked this book out and I renewed it as many times as I could before like you're not allowed to renew anymore. I'd bring it back and then the next day just like check it out again <laughs> and then renew it for like three more weeks or whatever. I did that for a really long time. I even made this sketch uh, based off of the cover picture and sadly I don't think I have the original anymore but I was lucky enough to take this picture so it surviveth. My favorite thing that I learned from the book by the way is that Vincent Price's grandfather invented baking powder. So when I went off to college, I remember trying to talk to someone I just met. It was a girl. I don't remember who the heck it was. Somebody I was just like casually talking to and I mentioned Vincent Price and she goes, who's that? And this was basically my reaction. I could not fathom that someone had not heard of Vincent Price inconceivable. So needless to say, as my life continued on, obviously, since I'm sitting here at a ripened 34 years old, I became obviously more and more fascinated with Vincent Price. It's not something I ever really talked about because it's not like, oh, I'm obsessed with Vincent Price. I live and breathe and eat, you know, everything. Blah, blah. It's just one of the things that's always just been present, you know, to me throughout my adult life. I always remembered that biography that I found in the library when I was younger, that I drew the picture from and everything, and I, I wanted it. I wanted to own it, you know, because I, it, for some reason it didn't occur to me when I was a young teenager to go and like buy a book, because I live in a small town. We didn't have a Barnes and Noble. I don't even think we had a bookstore back then, to be honest. Like, there was no bookstore to speak of. I'm trying to think of where people even got their books. I probably would have had to go all the way to Columbus to like Borders Books or something. And that wasn't on my mind. Like I'm gonna ask my mom to drive me like two hours away to this town and spend money on this book. Like it's just not something that occurred to me as a kid, you know what I mean? So when I grew up I started looking for the book and of course by this time, you know, it was like out of print so it wasn't new on the shelves anymore so I basically had to scour used bookstores around the country. Never found it, could never find it, and I just kept looking even to this day. I mean, I looked in every state that I lived in, and I could not find this darn thing. The last time Mike and I went back to Ohio, I even went back to the library, my town library where it originally was, just to find it, just to show it to him. Like, this is the exact copy that I kept for like a year <laughs> because I kept renewing it so much. It wasn't even there anymore. So I was like, what the heck? I, uh -huh. But I just kept at it, and I'm just like, I want this book. I want to get this book. Especially now because like I'm an adult and I've taken on this huge book collection now and I'm obsessed with memoirs and biographies so it's only right that my first biography ever and my most beloved one from my most beloved actor, horror icon, thank you very much, be a part of my book collection. So I know I could have easily ordered it online at any point. I realized that. Part of the fun to me was like the hunt, you know, it's like the easy way out to just, oh, I'm just gonna go on Amazon and just like order it. And yeah, there, now I have it. And like, I don't know, that just seemed too cheap to me to do. And it, I just really wanted to find it. Like I just wanted to unearth it, you know, myself rather than just take the easy way out and just like click and order it, you know, from the world wide web. I just didn't want to do it that way. So finally, 20 years later. Finally, 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 I found it! Yay! 
I feel like I should have subtitled that. So here it is. This is the Vincent Price biography by his daughter, Victoria Price. It's very heavy and very thick and it's very big. It's just exactly how I remember it. And it's mine. <laughs> I'm really super excited about this. Yeah, basically I devoted an entire video to a one book book haul. I'm really, really excited about finally having this book. I, you can't even, let me get him up into frame here. Like, look, he's my friend. We're gonna hang out. I am so excited about having this book finally. Like, I can't even tell you how glad I am that this is gonna be joining the memoirs and biographies on my shelves. If you guys can see the light flickering, I promise there's a ghost in our house. That is the explanation at this point. So many weird things happen when I'm on camera and when I'm off camera. I've just stopped trying to explain it and I'm just like, you know what? It's the ghost. It's, it's, the, it's the house ghost. That, that's what it is. Oh, and speaking of how I mentioned that I love Sherlock Holmes, which you guys know, do you have any idea how absolutely thrilled I was when I watched The Great Mouse Detective, which is a like cartoon mouse version adaptation of Sherlock Holmes. I mean, Basil of Baker Street, Basil Rathbone was the original Sherlock Holmes. I have his same birthday. My mom was in love with him when she was a kid. Anyway, there's so many like th six degrees of Kevin Bacon going on with, with this whole thing. It's like unreal. But anyways, do you have any idea how thrilled I was when I watched that? And I heard Rathbone's voice and I was the like... Big Ben Caper, the head that made headlines. Oh my god, Professor Radigan is with the race! <laughs> I was like so ec ec ecstatic. I had to like pause the movie because I was like freaking out because it was like two of my worlds came together. Sherlock Holmes and Vincent Price. Like, ah! why do I feel like Basil Rathbone was involved in that too? I don't know. Well, they were buddies. Like Peter Lore, Laurie, I, I don't know. <laughs> Vincent Price, Basil Rathbone. So it's like old horror is, is so much better than new stuff. So if you're unfamiliar with Vincent Price, definitely go rent some of the movies. I guarantee your local library has at least one or two of them. Thank you for joining me on my ranting obsessive talk about Vincent Price, one of the greatest horror legends of all time. So share your thoughts and memories and your favorite Vincent Price movies with me in the comments below. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. And I will see you guys in my next video. Mr. Price is going to say goodbye this time. Mm, thank you very much for watching. That is the worst Vincent Price voice ever in the history of bad Vincent Price voices. Goodbye. I sometimes feel that I am impersonating the dark subconscious of the whole human race.